What's up guys and welcome back to another one of my escapades and tonight I am at this abandoned schoolhouse Let's see this lights not gonna be able to show you But there is an there it is There's a one-room schoolhouse behind me And I've been here about 20 years ago. This place is very haunted There was a face that appeared behind us when we were here, me and my friends, when we were here about 20 years ago, there was a face that appeared inside behind us and the lock on the back door unlocked for me specifically. So we're gonna go down there and we're gonna see if we can get in. There was already a noise. There was already a noise. We got a nice full moon right now. I don't know if it's full full, it's kind of full, kind of full, but it's right off of the side of the road here. Let me go down there and see if we can get in. Let's go. So, since I've been here before, that does give us an advantage. But it also gives us a little bit more of a scare factor. Oh, someone's coming down that road. I thought somebody was coming down that road, but I think it's just my ears playing tricks on me. This place, there's so much more development since I've been here 20 years ago. Gotta walk over these here. These plants were so much smaller. Oh, there's a nice little trail. This trail existed back then as well. So the thing I was saying is because it's got a little more of a creep factor because I've been here before, I already know what to expect out of some things here. So there's a story on the front door. Let's go over and I'll show you. There's water filling up over there. But, um, so this merry ground, let's see if it'll do it. It still moves. Now when it stops, it's gonna go the other way. It hardly creaks. It's a tiny creak. It's not going the other way. See, when I was here last time, 20 years ago, <laughs> this merry ground, when it stopped, it would start moving the other way. But I had been here a couple of times. So I'm sure the spirits knew who I was and they were just showing me that they were here more and more. There's knocking happening over here. So there's a creepy story about this front door. There is a lock on it. Oh, they took the picture down. Oh man. They took the story down. There was a picture of everybody that used to be in the schoolhouse. Those are geese flying. Whenever you hear like migratory birds like that, try not to point lights into the sky because it makes them, it blinds them. It, it gives them a navigational blindness. Just a quick tip. Look at the spider. That is a big spider. It looks like it got something too. What did it get? Oh, it got a hornet. It's eating a hornet. That is an orb weaver. They are good garden spiders. They will not come after humans. They, they don't attack humans. They are great for getting rid of bigger pests like that. 
So the story, let's see if the story is over here. The upper Crown Creek. Oh, here's where the pictures were. These pictures were creepy. You can kind of see, you can kind of see the image of the people that are burned. It's burned into this. I wonder why the pictures were taken down. But these were pretty creepy pictures. It was of the, the teacher and the kids that she taught. You can see the little heads, kind of. Let me see, can you guys, can you guys see? Yeah, kind of, yeah. So you see how you guys can actually see it way better through the camera than in real life. You can almost see the full picture. That's creepy. So last time I was here, this picture looked like it was coming away from the plaque. Both of these did. And it was like creating a double of the people that were in them. So yeah, so here we go. Let me, I'm going to go ahead and read this for you because it is an interesting story. So I'm going to go ahead and read this for you. The Upper Caddo Creek Schoolhouse has had a long history. By 1888, three years after Defiance, Glenwood Springs was founded. The school had been construction on land donated by Albert Coulter, a local rancher. It was common in those days for landowners to donate an acre of land to the school district. Building the school was a community and family effort. Two fathers, Patrick Waters and Frank Horskel, 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 <laughs> are known to have helped. Later, their children attended the school. Local ranchers helped construct several other buildings on the property. Two outhouses, a coal shed, and a horse barn, which has since been relocated to Spring Valley. By the 1920s, a white wooden fence surrounding the property, playground equipment, and the flagpole was installed by C.W. Miller in 1930. The merry ground was recently restored as a part of the Boy Scout Eagle, Eagle Project. So when they say recently, though, that was recent back in early 2000. Mr. J.T. Stump was the first teacher with an initial class of 12 students in grades 1 through 8. School started at 9 a.m. and ended at 4 p.m. Bible study came first. Parents appreciated the moral teachings because to take their children to church in town was a rare, laborious, all-day event. After Bible study, the children learned reading, writing, arithmetic, geography, and grammar. The teacher started with the youngest students as the younger students were being taught the older students were expected to study or tutor their younger classmates. Mr. J.T. Stump taught for many years. Subsequent teachers were usually female. There's a car coming. Yeah, they're going down into Carbondale, it looks like. This is like a midway road in between Glenwood Springs and Carbondale. Hold on, I'll tell you why I'm so sketched out about that real quick. So back in the day, when I was coming up here, I got chased by... It was the first time I got chased at a property, was this property. And it was by some, some farmers, but they were chasing me and my friend. We were both up here uh, exploring, scaring ourselves because we knew it was haunted. <laughs> And this car, like, this truck passed me on this road, but it kept on going. It didn't turn where those cars turned. It kept going down the road. And about, I want to say, like a half an hour later, it came back up that road. And there was two guys that got out of their truck. And me and my friend, we had to hide back there in the weeds and around the side of the building so that they didn't see us. And the entire time, they were saying, come out to play. We know you're here. Come on, come out and play with us. <laughs> the whole time. So we finally were able to make it to my car and then book it down the road. But they saw us leave and they started chasing us. And they chased us almost all the way into the college campus because if you keep going down that road where those cars came from you're gonna hit the college campus that's out there <laughs> so they almost got to the college campus before we lost them I want to say lost them but I have a feeling they turned around because they knew that we were getting close to civilization there's a lot more houses out here right now so I'm a little less sketched out about cars on this road 
But that that memory, that memory is still in there. So going back to this. During the lunch break, the children race to play on the playground equipment or to start a game of Kick the Can or Red Rover. Often, the teacher would join the students in a year-long softball game. During the winter, the children were sledding, went sledding. During the winter, the children went sledding. A favorite recess activity for the older students was jumping off the high cliff south of the schoolhouse and landing in the soft snowdrift below. When the teacher rang the bell, the students would file back into the school for a welcome after lunch story and several not-so-welcome lessons. Yeah, the uh, bell used to ring, so I, I don't think we're going to be able to get through the front door. It looks like they have a nice new lock on it. But the back door is what opened for me before. So we're going to go to the back door and see if it is still open. Punishment was rare. Children knew that there were several consequences for misbehavior. One incident was retold by both Viola Miller Walters, or Waters, not Walters, Waters, and Ethel Waters, Hoist Girl, Hoist Girl. One day during recess, a hired hand tending to the horses gathered some of the boys together behind the barn to teach them how to chew tobacco. When the boys returned to class, the village vigilant teacher proceeded to teach the boys how to chew soap. Students who lived far away boarded with classmates or spent weekends, weeknights at the school. When snowstorms were severe, the children stayed overnight at the schoolhouse and slept on wooden benches near the walls. The boys on the west side and the girls on the east side. The teacher became mother, father, cook, and companion to many stranded children. One year, during a six-week blizzard, all but two students were trapped at the school. Once a month, usually on Saturdays, the Upper Cattle Creek School held a dance. Everyone in the area was invited. Dances were something that everyone looked forward to. Mothers made cakes, pies, sandwiches, and all sorts of tasty things to eat. A community band provided music, with the teacher usually playing the piano. One occurrence sticks in the mind of many Valley residents. During a dance in the 1940s, there was a shooting at the schoolhouse, following a quarrel which arose between a jealous husband and a lustful neighbor. The frightened children hid behind the wooden porch. Behind the wooden porch. Shots were fired before the adults were able to wrangle the gun away from the crazed husband. Fortunately, no one was hurt. However, several bullet holes forever marred the chalkboard. In 1942, the school was closed forever to the sound of school children's voices. Only the wooden benches that served as bed and chair to so many students still remained in the schoolhouse. Though the school doors were closed, the schoolhouse was not abandoned. Dances and community meetings were held in the building until the 1980s. The Upper Cattle Creek Schoolhouse Association has since maintained the building and property. The schoolhouse was painted in 91 and the hostile colony of bees was exterminated in 93. <laughs> this building, which stands as a reminder of our past, has served many local ranchers and their families for over 100 years. So yeah, so there was a shooting here. Another car coming. We're gonna turn. Yep, we're gonna turn. All right, that's cool. Keep driving, keep driving. No stopping. So yeah, so. There was a shooting here, but apparently no one was hurt. Apparently. Now, me and my friends back in the day, we thought that that probably wasn't accurate. And they might not have recorded if anyone had been shot that night. Or if anyone had been killed on this property before. And you can see the bullet holes. The interesting thing that I just noticed is that they said that the bell was donated. But the bell worked in the early 2000s. The bell worked. <laughs> you could pull on the rope and you could hear the bell still. So I'm not too sure what we all were hearing. It was a ghost bell. Let's see if we can get in though. So this front door here... This front door has an interesting story behind it. You see how there used to be like a lock there? And a locking me mechanism right here. Right there. So it was, they, this was not on it before. Okay, so we came up here and we were trying to get in. And we were able 
to get this doorknob to turn. But when we did, it sounded like a plank fell down behind a couple of stairs. It sounded like it went downstairs. When you open this door, there's no staircase behind it. And we were looking for a wooden plank. There was no wooden plank. But you could definitely hear a wooden plank hit the ground. These steps have been redone. They were falling apart. <laughs> they look like they're starting to again, but I'm glad that they're keeping these steps up. Whoa, that last step is a big one. <laughs> Mushrooms. Let me know if you guys see anything. I'm not looking in the camera scare screen right now. I don't think, no, you can't see in there, from there. So this back door out here, wow, this has overgrown so much since I've been here. It looks cool though. So that's the outhouse. That's the outhouse back there where they were taught how to chew tobacco. And then this is a storehouse. Whoa. Oh, jeez, the bird. <laughs> always a bird. It's always a bird. <sighs> All right. Oh, they might have locked it from the inside now. There used to be a padlock back here. It was right here. There used to be a padlock on the door. There we go. There's the padlock mark. There used to be a padlock right there. And when me and my friend were trying to get in before... This padlock was on it, so we walked away, right? And uh, after we got almost around the corner right there, we heard it undo itself. It came completely off of the wood piece, like somebody just ripped it off of the door jam. Let's see if this door opens. No. It's locked from the inside now. That's what I was afraid of. But that's okay. It's better to preserve the inside than allow people to come in to ruin the inside. I hope the inside still looks the same as it once did before. Maybe I can talk to somebody with the city and they would allow me to come in here because this isn't too far away from my house. So this would be worth another camp trip or something like that. It's only about four hours away from Colorado Springs. So it's something that I can come back to. Oh, let's take a look on this side of the house though. Yeah, everything is just locked up. Everything is boarded up. I mean, I don't blame them. I'm hearing things. That must be an open well for like cattle or something like that that's draining right now. That's an owl. Did you know that you cannot hear an owl flying? Their wings make no noise at all. There it is again. A little bug stopped in to say hi. Oh my really likes my light. <laughs> Little fairy moth. Oh my. Trying to night blind it. <laughs> Make it not hit me in the face. <laughs> These moths don't know where they're flying sometimes. <laughs> Just fly in circles towards any light. What was that? Did you guys hear that? There was like a metal clink. Wasn't anything on me.
Our car is still up there. Another thing about this place is I have never walked away from this place. I've always had to run to my car from this place. I don't know what happened here or what was here before the schoolhouse was here, but this is a crazy place. I'll tell you the story of the inside here. Maybe the merry ground moved. You're starting to be able to see your breath. I just heard something over there. I don't see anything. I don't see any eyes looking at me. So this place right here. Okay, once you get in, there are benches on either side of the walls. And they run the entire length of the wall back to a chalkboard. And there is a rope hanging from the middle to pull on for the bell. In the very beginning right here, in the very beginning through this front door, there is a corridor that you kind of walk through. It's kind of like a hallway that you walk around to get into the schoolhouse, the middle of the schoolhouse. And that was usually used for like coats, backpacks, bags, probably not backpacks, but coats, bags, boots, all of that was to come off in this very beginning in this corridor. And sometimes the kids would have little cubby holes to put their stuff in, sometimes not. But there was one night where I had brought some friends up here and because they were, they were skeptics and they did not believe me that this place was haunted. So we came up here and we had a little, just a, just a, just a little bit of a party, right? Just a little bit, completely respectful to the building. We didn't damage anything inside. We were being completely respectful to our surroundings and... I heard some more noises <laughs> and, uh, you know, just having a little bit of a party inside. And as it got closer to 3 a.m., as it got closer to dead hour, uh, this couple that had come up with us, I, I think it was like a friend of a friend. I just heard the wood behind me knock, but it was like a friend of a friend that came with us. And this couple was sitting in the corner, it was in the far back corner. So, so on this side of the building, back there, the far back corner back there, okay? And this head appeared. It just it appeared out of, the, out of the shadows. It just formed, and all of us could see it. There was like 10 plus of us. All of us could see it. And once it knew that we could see it, he took his hand, lifted it up, and he did this. And he grabbed the side of his face, and he pulled it off. <laughs> and then he disappeared. <laughs> so when we saw that, we booked it out of here. When we saw that, we ran so hard to all of our cars, and we drove so fast down this road, which used to be a dirt road, it's not dirt anymore, it's paved. So that makes it a little bit easier to get around over here. But yeah, we drove so fast down that road. That was the craziest ghost I have ever seen. <laughs> that was the craziest ghost I have ever seen with my eyes. It is too bad that we can't get up in here. Oh, that must be the address of the school, 1888. That must be the address. That wasn't there before. You can see the bell tower too. There goes the bell, the bell tower right there. It looks like there's access to it. Like someone was able to climb up there. Probably for maintenance, you know. Yeah, there's the bell tower and that's the bell that I, I heard. I've heard that bell. But the plaque said that the bell was donated in 1930-ish, right? Or 97? In the 1900s, before I came up here, it was donated. All right. Kind of want to see if we can communicate with anybody. Let's do this real quick. I get 
some stuff out. I just heard some knocks back here. I don't know if you guys can see me with me standing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kneel. But I know for a fact there's no electricity coming to this house. So we're gonna use the EMF meter real quick and see if we can get any kind of signals on this front porch. Is there anyone here with me? Any spirits? Car's coming. Are there any spirits here with me? The engine echoes forever. <laughs> oh, cracks. Cracks in the wood. I'm not moving, so there really shouldn't be that many cracks in the wood. Unless those are like bugs running into the wall. <laughs> because of the light. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody here with me? Grab the machine in my hand. Touch the hand. Touch my hand. It's okay to do so. It won't hurt you. I was here 20 years ago. It's okay to show yourself. Touch the machine in my hand. It will make the lights go up. And it will prove to me that you're here. I'm gonna walk this side too. You guys are kind of at the end of it, but it goes a little bit further behind you. Come talk to me. Can you come hold my hand? All right, nothing on the EMF reader. Go ahead and shut that off. Did it shut off? I guess we'll find out if it shuts off or not. We're gonna turn up the sweep rate, sweep rate just a little bit. Name? You guys heard that? My name is Aiden, what's your name? Get closer. I think I just heard what is that? This is the this machine will let me hear your voice. Do you want to come talk to me?
Okay, spider, stay underneath the porch, please. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I don't want to sit. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to sit. Can you speak a little bit louder? Here, you know what? I'm going to leave that light on. Make sure that volume's up. I think I heard tiptoe. Is there someone here with me? If you need energy, you can take energy from this flashlight on the porch here. What is your name? My name is Aiden. What is yours? I think I heard Emily. Did you say your name was Emily? Here. Not something. Oh look, another curious little moth. <laughs> Did you die here? Are you stuck in this building? I'm getting a bunch of different voices. Just so that I can hear you better, I'm going to switch the machine that I'm using to a different machine that will say the words immediately. I'll leave that right there since I can hear it very well. We will touch you. I did say to touch my hand. I mean, it does have a little EMF reader right here as well on this app. So, go ahead, touch this hand. Do you remember me? Around. Around? Are you around me? Here, can you knock back? Knock back for me. They're so quiet. I'm listening to everything. That's probably why they're so quiet. They said I'm listening to everything. Noise. Noise. Can you knock back? Knock on the wall for me. I know you're here.
You've already shown me that you're here. And if you're going to touch my hand... I respect hand, you. I respect you. Okay, well, thank you. I respect you as well. Can you please show yourself to the camera that's sitting right here? Or touch my hand and make this EMF meter, make this meter, make these lights go up into the red? Can you do that for me, please? One of the lights just shut off. That light was fully charged. Was that you that shut off that light just now? I've got two lights left. <laughs> and some flashlights. So we're good. But that was my face light. I got another face light that I can attach. Just as long as you guys can still see me, which I think you might be able to. I'm going to put the face light on just in case you can't see me anymore. Are you children? Mental. Mental? What's mental? It can attach right to that light. That's pretty cool. Hunter? Hunter? Who is Hunter? Party. Party! Yes, we did have a party. Do you remember me? Whoa, I don't know what that was. That was right up in my face. <clears throat> Can you say my name? <laughs> say my name, say my name. <laughs> Can you knock on the door for me? Can you make a noise, please? If you need more energy, you can take energy from this light here. Please don't take energy from those two lights do anymore. Do you believe? I do believe. I know you're here. It asks, do you believe? I know you're here. I know for a fact you're here. You have scared me many times. I've been up here many times before. It was a long time ago, but I've been up here many times. And you have scared me many times. Go away, Moth. <laughs> Can you show me that you're still here and knock on the wall? I know you're strong enough to do, to do so. I'm getting hiccups again. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Hiccups have got to be connected with uh, communication with the spirits. They've got to be connected somehow because every time I get these hiccups Ooh, that was a knock that was a big knock was that you I'm feeling tired. Well, that could be why. That could be why we're not getting a lot of responses. 
Okay. You can take energy from this light right here if you need it. Or we can stop this session. Do you want to stop communication? Can you make the merry-go-round move? I thought I heard voices. I thought I heard children's voices right now. There's no cars. And it is still in a secluded area that walking here unless they're coming from the house that's right across the street. Let me turn you guys around so you can see the merry ground. Regina. Regina? Is your name Regina? Can you make the merry go round move please? Like you've done before? I feel like I should go down too when I grab, when I grab the stuff. Okay, I got the spirit box inside my pocket. It's still on. Let's see what you guys are seeing. Okay. My top light is starting to die as well. Both these lights were charged up. I haven't really been recording for too long. Both these lights were charged up before I came out here. I specifically let them charge up all day because I knew... They blamed me. What was that? They blamed Hold me? Hold out your hand. Hold out your hand. Alright. Make those lights light up. Touch my hand. Here, I'll use the other one. I'm going to stop this real quick. Let me use the other one. Because I know for a fact that this one works. I haven't seen the um, the one on the Spirit Talker work yet. But I know that this one works. I've seen this one work. If the maker of the Spirit Talker is watching right now. Uh, yeah, let me know about that EMF. Calibrator. Okay. That talks about how it's only going to pick up other electromagnetic fields and not the one that is in the phone. I have this on airplane mode as well, so it's not picking up any random signals. Touch my hand. Touch my hand. Make the lights go up. Make the lights go up into the red. I know you can do it. Make the lights light up. Touch my hand. You want to touch my hand? Touch my hand. Make the lights light up. Make the merry ground move the opposite way. Make it move the opposite way. Nope. Wow. Turn the spirit box back on. Nice full moon. 
It always makes this place so bright because it's a white, it's painted up white. Here. Up here? Yes, please appear. Please appear in front of my camera, please. Please appear to me in front of me, please. That is exactly what I want you to do. Please appear. Do I need to ride the merry-go-round? I will ride this merry-go-round. <laughs> Here, I'll put the lights on me, and I will ride this merry-go-round. Oh my, oh, okay, that was my stuff. I felt like somebody just hit me in the back of my head. <laughs> that was my stuff on my backpack, though. Let's see, can you see the merry-go-round? Yours. Yours? What's mine? There we go. Okay, let's ride this merry go round. <laughs> Ready? Really good. <laughs> Children want to speak. Children want to speak? Okay, cool. Cannon. Cannon. What about Cannon? Oh. Poisoned blood. Poisoned blood. What? This light's dying. Were you poisoned? Hiccups again. We can see you all. You can see us all? Who's us all? Is there more than just me standing here? Did I get followed by someone? Can you make a giant noise for me before I leave, please? Can you bang on the wall before I go? My other face light died out. That's two face lights that died out. They were both fully charged. Cause one is my backup face light. So that one was, that one stays fully charged. <laughs> And that one didn't last. I will talk to you. At all. You will talk to me? Okay, cool. What's your name? Oh, did you guys hear that? Oh, it gave me chills. I'm happy. That's good. I'm glad you're happy here. If you got to be at a place, at least you're happy here. Can you tell me your name? I'm going to come visit you in the morning. Is that okay? So I'm gonna come back. A good spirit. A good spirit. That's good. I'm glad that there is a good spirit here and not an angry spirit here like I thought there was. Maybe the angry spirit has been sent on its way. But I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. And I will come back in the morning because I want to see, I want to show you guys what the morning looks like. So I will come back in the morning.
and we'll do the dousing rods in the morning. That was me. <laughs> Okay, it's just a bird. I thought it was like more children laughing or something. Anyway. Don't forget to smash that like button. Hit the subscription button if you're new to the channel. As well as the little bell notification icon. So that you don't miss the next escapade. And as for now, I'm out of here.